Plagiarism slash creative work. Definitions, types of plagiarism, and creative work. Definition of plagiarism and creative work. Plagiarism is when you take or use someone else's work without giving them credit. Creative work is a created, creative effort like art, filmmaking, writing, etc. Types of plagiarism. Direct plagiarism is exact words from a source without giving credit. Image plagiarism is when you copy and paste or copy the layout of an image without giving credit. Paraphrasing plagiarism is when you paraphrase information in your own words without giving credit. Continued. Remix plagiarism is mashing together multiple sources with some paraphrasing in between. Self-plagiarism is reusing information you have already said or used. Accidental plagiarism, the most common type of plagiarism, is when you plagiarize without knowing. Copyright of creative work. What can be copyrighted? Literary work, online writings, music related work, recorded choreographic works, pictorial works, movies, and sound recordings. What can't be copyrighted? Non preserved work, titles, symbols, designs, list of ingredients, contents, typefaces, page designs, and layouts, ideas, common property, and public do domain. How to avoid and teach plagiarism. Three ways teachers can help students avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism trackers. Plagiarism trackers like Turnitin.com and Plague Tracker are useful for finding out what someone plagiarized. These can be helpful, but they shouldn't be 100% trusted. Group work. Students working in groups are less likely to plagiarize because they can share ideas with each other. Students won't be as tempted to plagiarize because they can ask their group members questions. Check-ins. If teachers have random check-ins with students, then students probably won't plagiarize because they could get caught by the teacher. This will also motivate students to do more work if they know that their teacher might be checking in about. Citations. It is important that students cite quotations, paraphrased information, summaries, and facts. If you use a fact that is called knowledge, then it does not have to be cited. When you use a quote from a source, then it is important that you put parentheses around it and cite it. You always have to put the author and the title. If you have a book, then put page numbers, too. If you have a website, then also put the URL. Many citations need the date of publication, and you also need the date that your source was released. What students can do on their own to avoid plagiarism. If a student gets confused, then they, then they should ask a teacher a question, rather than trying to figure it out by themselves. If they try to do it by themselves, then they might make a mistake and plagiarize. If a student ever prints a source, then they have to make sure that there isn't any unsighted information. If a printed source doesn't have cited information, then the student might plagiarize if they use the source. When a teacher provides you with a resource, then you should use it because the teacher's information is probably reliable, so it would be a good source to use. One place where students mess up a lot is things like in-text citations or quotation marks. It is important that students pay attention to the small details. How can teachers help students with plagiarism? Teachers can show what will happen in the long run if students plagiarize. If students know the long term consequences, then it could scare them into not plagiarizing. Teachers should assign different aspects of a project at different times. This way, students only have to focus on one thing at a time rather than the whole project. Teachers should let students know what their punishments are for plagiarism, so students know what to expect if they plagiarize. 
Teachers should go over what plagiarism is and what it isn't. If students know what plagiarism looks like, then they will probably know if they plagiarize because their work will look wrong. The consequences of plagiarism. There are many consequences to plagiarism. The consequences of plagiar plagiarizing are similar in schools. Worldwide, those consequences include failure on an assignment, grade reduction, course failure, suspension, and possible expulsion. Plagiarism is on a rise in schools, colleges, and universities. This is because students are faced with a tremendous amount of stress and pressure, and it has become easier to copy off the internet and get the answers from a friend. Plagiarism is also on a high because people have more access to the internet. Because plagiarism is on a rise and is more common nowadays, the consequences have become a lot more severe. Plagiarism is a serious act of academic dishonesty. Plagiarism has very serious consequences, especially in colleges and universities. For example, the University of UMass Amherst. UMass has two different types of resolutions for the act in academic dishonesty. Those pun punishments are called an informal charge and a formal charge. An informal is an easy way to deal with cases of lying. The student and teacher will, be, will come up with an agreement on the punishment and the student will complete and sign an informal resolution form. Your first charge will be confidential. A formal charge is if you and a faculty member cannot agree upon an informal resolution. If this happens, a hearing is held and dealt with by the Academic Honesty Board. If validated, a formal charge will result in punishment and be put on a student's disciplinary file. Academic dishonesty includes cheating purposely, using trickery or deception in one's academic work, fabrication to alter an information or evidence, plagiarism, copying the words from someone else's words or another source like a website or a book, facilitating dishonesty, knowingly helping another student carry out an act of academic dishonesty. Current events. Donald Trump is being accused of plagiarizing a, plagiarizing a speech from Legally Blonde. Netflix and Stranger Things are being sued for plagiarism again. UCF accused Dr. Coach of plagiarism and vowed to revoke his PhD. Okay, Piracy by Ella O, Christian S, Isabel L, and John G. Software piracy. What is software piracy? As defined by Barry and Webster, the unauthorized, the unauthorized use of another's product, invention, or conception, especially in infringement of copyright. Software piracy is a criminal offense that usually defines the unlawful acquirement, usage, or distribution of copyrighted software. Software refers to movies, music, computer programs, etc. What are some types of software piracy? Types of piracy as defined by Norton Microsoft. Counterfeiting is when copyrighted material is, is duplicated with the intent of trying to imitate the original. Most of the time, counterfeited software is exchanged with others. Internet piracy is when protected material, material is made available for download on the internet without the approval of the copyright holder. And user piracy is when, it use, is when a buyer copies software without the approval of a copyright holder. For most programs, it is possible for multiple people on a local network to connect to a central copy of the material. However, this becomes a form of piracy when more people connect to the copy than the copyright holder allows. Hard disk loading mainly occurs when illegal copies of software are uploaded onto a new device 
in order to make it look more appealing for the buyer of the device. All these are considered criminal offenses. What are some important legal cases concerning piracy? The Digital Millennium Copyright Act. A bill passed by Congress which attempted to prevent software pirates from producing or distributing software capable of circumventing copyright measures. Despite its good intentions, experts have warned that legitimate buyers of software may find themselves with tighter restrictions of what they can do with their software. It is feared that either mod modest changes to software could be in violation of the DMCA. The Software and Information Industry, or the SIAIA, is a business conglomerate consisting of over 800 co companies. The SIIA aims to represent its member countries' interests within the federal government and the federal government. Recently, the SIIA has begun to crack down on possible distribution of pirated material. Individuals who, who distribute copyright software, copyrighted software are now under threat of being sued by the industry. Court cases settled with industry lawyers usually end in fines within the hundreds of thousands of dollars for distribution of copyrighted material. The FBI estimates that over 60% of software being sold on e eBay was pirated. Consequences of piracy. What are the consequences of piracy? Piracy can lead to many consequences, including anywhere up to five years in prison. Fines can be as much as $250,000. If piracy is committed more than once, fines will go up and jail sentences may be as long as 10 years. I found this pie chart online and it shows that among the 50% of people who support fines, how much money they are fined for illegally pirating one song. From this chart, you can tell that the most people are not fined the highest amount of money, which is $250,000. 43% of people were fined as little as $11 to $100. A former city mayor dealt with piracy. Video piracy causes filmmakers who work hard to bring their vision to the screen to have their work be taken advantage of and used with no benefit towards them. Whenever internet piracy is committed, it results in 22,986 fewer jobs and $903 million lost in earnings. A major case where there were great consequences of piracy. A man from California has been accused of stealing copies of The Revenant and The Peanuts movie. His fines ended up being very large, $1.12 million to Fox Studios. This man is also sentenced to eight months of home detention and 24 months of probation. Later, people are saying it may lead him to three years in jail. Can internet piracy lead to jail time? New York City officials found out that people were videotaping in theaters for illegal sale. New York City has said to be one of the most one of the most popular places where piracy is committed because of how many films they make. Movie piracy. What is okay and not okay? Um, these are the things that are okay. Downloading or streaming movies from a website if the person who made the movie allows the person with the website to use it. Using a copy of a movie that was made legally. And these are the things that are not okay. Downloading movies from a pirated site, making copies of movies and giving everyone access to them. Making a copy of a DVD, even if, even if it's for your personal use. Making a copy of a movie illegally and selling it and some of the con consequences um, are being fined from $30,000 to $150,000 and possibly some time in prison. How are movies pirated? Pirated movies are commonly shared through file sharing services or DVD copies. Movies can be transferred 
from a DVD to someone's computer so they can later share or trade the movie. Movies are also pirated and shared on the internet through circumvention devices. These devices disable copy protection on DVDs. What is movie piracy? Movie piracy is when someone creates a copy of a movie, either puts it out on the internet or downs it into a DVD. What are some websites that had pirated movies on them? Kaza, eDonkey, BitTurrent, and G Nutella. Um, what movies were on there? The most popular download was Lord of the Rings Return of the King with 45,123 copies made. Music piracy. What is music piracy? Music piracy can vary from downloading illegal versions of copyrighted music from a file sharing service to illegal, illegally copying music that is streamed online or on mobile apps. Big apps, big piracy apps have been shut down. Apps like Spotify are a big help with the decline of piracy. A big app that was shut down was Napster. This app was so, so appealing because it used a celestial jukebox, which means whatever you want, whenever you want. Spotify is a big app and a big help to the decline of music piracy because it offers a celestial jukebox, but in, in a legal manner. There was a poll that was done in Swedish on internet users that use file sharing softwares. 60% of them had cut back or stopped using it, and most of them switched to apps like Spotify. Um, oh, this chart shows how music piracy has declined dramatically over the past years and how streaming is gradually growing. When you search on Google, Google doesn't prevent a pirated website from showing up. It is alleged that Google makes profit from pirated websites. The Google engine giant is making money through file sharing, but they have no way of telling if the person's intent is on pirating or not. The organization admitted through Google has taken some average measures to handle piracy, but they think Google search engines should not send users to illegal to legal, I mean, they should send users to legal music websites and not to illegal da illegally downloaded websites. Music industry poses a, an idea to make a traffic light system. This system would put red, green, and amber alert system next to the search results. The traffic light system would highlight any illegal and copyrighted infringement music sites. The system would organize the web rather than legalize it. So it would, wouldn't would take any illegal websites away. Google says they, that they would be happy to use the system. But reports say they only said this after, after extreme, um, after extreme pressure from um, outside parties. Plagiarism and Creative Work by Natalia Kluza, Holly Buckley, and Maggie Brinzi. According to Merriam-Webster, to plagiarize means to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own. The alternate definition is to use or pass off the ideas or words of another's production without crediting the source. Plagiarize is a verb that roots from the Latin word plagiarius. It means abductor. Plagiarism and piracy are the two main ways to violate a copyright law. Violating a copyright law is more commonly done by business or group of people, but also can be done as an individual. There are many different types of plagiarism, each with different levels of severity. Here it is organized in a pyramid. The most severe type of plagiarism is global plagiarism. 
global plagiarism is the most extreme and easily pointed out. An example of it would be taking someone else's exact poster and presenting it with their exact script. The next three, a step lower on the pyramid, are of slightly less severity. There is direct plagiarism, also known as verbatim plagiarism. It is like copying and pasting a paragraph from a website. It is usually the first type of plagiarism people think of. Then, paraphrasing plagiarism. It means to paraphrase someone else's work without citing them. It is the most common type of plagiarism because a lot of people think you don't need to cite a source when you paraphrase. Lastly, in the middle of the pyramid, we have mosaic plagiarism. It is to combine work from multiple sources without proper citations. Mosaic plagiarism can also be defined as taking someone else's work and substituting some of the words for synonyms or even keeping the general idea of the work. This is called patch writing. Patch writing is a very common behavior, so be careful. These last two types of plagiarism are the least severe types of plagiarism, but are still taken very seriously. Self-plagiarism is using your own work from a previous assignment in a current assignment without permission from the teacher. An example would be using a paragraph that you wrote in ninth grade on an assignment in 11th grade. Self-plagiarism can also be defined as using work from one class in another in the same year. Lastly, there is incorrect citation. This is a very common type of plagiarism that can be very easily be accidentally committed. All it takes is to fail to cite a source used in an assignment or not include all the necessary information in a citation. Although there are different types of plagiarism with different levels of consequences, every act of plagiarism is taken very seriously with serious consequences whether or not it is intentional. So be cautious when citing your sources. There are many consequences that you may face for plagiarizing. There are examples listed below. If you plagiarize at your work, you will most likely lose your job. At, if you're a student, you will either have to redo your paper, fail, or get suspended. If you're caught plagiarizing in a debate, you will be forced to drop out. In some cases, you may even have to pay the creator that you copied off of. If you plagiarize as a teacher, you will have to face many consequences. Here is a list, uh, bar chart of students plagiarizing. Oh my god. Um, so if pl students plagiarize up to 100%, they will be kicked out of class or even school. If they plagiarize up to 60%, they'll have to, they may even fail or get suspended. If they plagiarize up to 40%, they'll have to redo the assignment. For teachers, it is a bit different. If they plagiarize up to 100%, they may get fired. If they plagiarize up to 60% of their work, they will get no master's or PhD to teach for two years. If they plagiarize up to 40% of their work, they will have to take the assignment back. If you, if you do not want to face any consequences that were listed above, these are ways to prevent the plagiarism. plagiarism. Uh, you can paraphrase and quote your work. You can cite your sources properly or use your own words. If you want to be careful, you can review your work before turning it in and take your time on your work. And you should create a work study page for the end of your presentation. Here are some real life examples of celebrities plagiarizing. Most plagiarizing occurrences among celebrities usually end in the person denying the accusation, then it sort of fades away. An example of it when, is when Barack Obama is accused of plagiarizing Hillary Clinton's speech. He denies it and claimed that go him and Governor Deval Patrick bounce ideas off of each other. The accusation eventually faded away with no consequence. Another example is when American rapper Vanilla Ice was accused of copying the beat and rhythm from the song Under Pressure in his hit Ice Ice Baby. He denied the claims but then paid royalties, royalties to Queen and David Bowie, the artist of Under Pressure, to avoid a court battle he would most likely lose. What is creative work? According to the Merriam-Webster, being creative or creative work is having the power to create something or make it your own. This is much like intellectual intellectual property, which is the result of being creative. The work you create may or may not be protected by the copyright law or a patent. Creative works that are copy, 
that are protected by the copyright law. Computer programs such as websites, online writings such as blogs, articles, music, pictures or graphics, recordings or architectural work. Some works that are not protected by the copyright law are titles such as books and articles, familiar recipes or symbols or designs, page designs and layouts, ideas and methods, and common properties such as calendars, tape measures, rulers, heights, weights, and more. Examples of creative work. Some examples of creative work are books or stories written by the Grimm brothers, including Alice in Wonderland, The Little Mermaid, and Cinderella. These stories were not protected by the copyright law and Disney took the ideas, recreated the stories to be geared towards younger audiences. Here's my works cited page and these are all the websites and articles I used to create my slides. Here are the sources I used for my slides. These are the uh, sources I used for my slides. Thank you to listening for our presentation on plagiarism and creative work. Piracy in the Digital World by Nathan Askew, Christian Bungi, Henry Richard, and Lincoln Patterson. Piracy is defined as the unconsented use, reproduction, or sharing of copyrighted or patented materials such as movies, music, TV shows, and software. Next slide, please. Music piracy is defined as illegally downloading music without payment, the illegal sharing of music with friends, or emailing links to illegally downloaded songs to friends. The piracy in piracy not only affects the music artists, but also a large amount of people working for the music industry. Next slide, please. Internet service providers receive IP addresses from suspected movie pirates. They then use this IP address to send written warnings to the suspected pirates. Next slide, please. Movie piracy is an international epidemic and can raise serious consequences. It also really hurts the movie industry. The Motion Picture Association of America asserts that anyone who sells, acquires, copies, distributes, or publicly broadcasts a copyrighted movie or DVD without permission infringes on copyright laws. Next slide, please. During the COVID lockdown, global film piracy increased by over 33%. The USA is tied for the lowest percentage of TV piracy during the COVID lockdown. Italy has the highest percentage increase of movie piracy and the UK has the highest percentage increase of TV piracy during the COVID lockdown. Next slide, please. What if you went into a store and drank an empty bottle and drank a bottle of Coca-Cola, putting the empty bottle on the shelf? Isn't this stealing? Is sneaking into the movie theater theft of services? It's all the same. Next slide, please. Softlifting is equivalent to shoplifting. You're considered a software pirate if you copy a friend's software package, use a copy for personal use, or borrow a program from a library and make a copy of it. All of these things amount to software piracy. Next slide, please. Software is protected by copyright laws. Individual publishers have the right to police software piracy. Next slide, please. Software piracy has two views, ethical and unethical. The ethical view is that people believe that it is their right to free information. They also believe that software piracy is part of fair use. Some pirates even cite the First Amendment. They also think that software piracy is a victimless crime. The unethical view is that information does not have the right to be free. The people that are producing the information have the right to profit. The First Amendment does not cover software piracy because it does not cover illegal actions of any sort. Software piracy is also not a victimless crime. Next slide, please. 
the software industry lost a total of $12 billion last year due to software piracy. Software piracy has also prevented the creation of a potential 100,000 jobs. And every time someone illegally distributes information, they're contributing to the momentary loss. Next slide, please. What is the difference between piracy and plagiarism? Piracy is the unconsented use, reproduction of, or reproduction, use, reproduction, or sharing of copyrighted or patent material. Piracy is also a form of theft and, and can raise serious legal actions. Plagiarism is the use of others' work without properly giving credit, using and also using others' work as your own. The Economic Impact of Digital Piracy by Christian Bungie. Next slide, please. The advent of the internet has caused many forms of entertainment with traditionally different mediums to place their content in a single easy to access place. This has led to unparalleled growth across several sectors of creative industry. However, the same technology that enabled this growth has opened a Pandora's box of threats. Nearly one fourth, 23.8% of the internet bandwidth across North America, Europe, and Asia is comprised of pirated or illicit material. It was estimated by a 2013 study that about $213 billion is lost globally to piracy each year. That's, um, that study also expected that figure to grow, grow to, to, be, to between 384 and 856 billion by 2022. Job loss as a result of piracy was estimated to be between two and 2.6 million in 2013 and was expected to grow to between 4.2 and 5.4 million by 2022. Piracy is so pervasive throughout the world that even a single point drop would yield tens of millions in direct economic growth. Piracy is considered a socioeconomic bad and be, can be likened to other forms of theft. However, the cost of piracy is much greater than any form of traditional theft as it reduces the, terms to, uh, the return to innovation, causing less original content to be produced each year. The study also says it is most likely that the value of total digital piracy exceeds our estimates by a considerable amount. This exemplifies the magnitude of the economic problem of piracy. Uh, next slide, please. The impact of piracy on the music industry. Piracy has crippled music sales. It is estimated that about 27.4 billion tracks were illegally downloaded in 2015. This amounted to $29 billion in economic harm. Mu uh, furthermore, music seems to be less valued in today's society, causing consumers to want to pay less for it. Copyright law has played catch up with music throughout modern times, with technologies evolving much faster than law. Publishers have had to implement new distribution methods, i.e. streaming, to maintain relevant. However, these have been largely detrimental to creators. In recent years, digital music sales have overtaken those of physical sales for the first time in history. However, streaming services are a two-sided coin, as a large library of songs decreases incentives to buy single albums or songs. Uh, furthermore, pirates are largely legal buy buyers, following the phrase "here before you buy," making sure they'll be satisfied with any. Um, sorry, making sure they'll be satisfied with anything they are about to purchase. Online services, online streaming services, are on their way to providing a middle ground between purchase and piracy. However, much work is still needed until that goal is realized. Next slide, please. The movie industry is by far the most economically damaged by piracy losing about $160 billion per year. Movie piracy displaces legitimate movie sales, hurting the industry in the process. Piracy also reduces the number of films produced per year, strangling the creative process. It is estimated that pre-box office 20% drop in the total revenue of a film. With the advent, with the introduction of the software BitTorrent came a 20% decline in video rentals after a previously steady incline. Furthermore, the strike down of the illegal file sharing site Mega Upload, commonly used to share uh, films and movies, uh, coincided with between a 6% and 8.5% uptick in movie sales. This shows that when an illegal option is not available, some resort to legal channels to receive films. Next slide, please. Just as the previous two industries, software has been adversely affected by piracy, losing about $29 billion per year. It is also estimated that about 40% of all installed piracy, uh, all installed software is illegal. 
the value of illegal soft in, illegally installed software grew from 40 billion to 52 billion between 2006 and 2015. 20% of UK it is sorry sorry I'm I'm gonna redo this. 20% uh, of UK users internet users over 12 admitted to knowingly using pirated software. 12% within the last three months. 39% of these users said they obtained an illegal version of some software before purchasing. 22% it was the case for all purchase software. The try before you buy model is also very prevalent in this industry. The chance of installing malware on pirated software is 33%, costing consumers an estimated $1.5 billion per year. This shows that installing, pir installing pirated software is, can also be damaging for your computer. A 1% decrease in software piracy yields a 0.2% increase in GDP per capita. A software piracy decrease by 10% would generate $142 billion in direct economic growth over the course of four years. Similar issues to this have been seen in the gaming industry, which already has several issues fitting into traditional copyright law. As copying is seen okay, as okay to a point in the gaming industry, it's um, copyright law is sort of a gray zone within it. Um, a free to fame model has helped reduce piracy rates in gaming. However, there are still many issues needing to be solved. So, um, the most prevalent is some not respecting the unwritten rule of copy, not, pi not plagiarize, leading to many infringement suits. Sorry. Um, next slide. The social perception of piracy. Despite the extreme economic impact of piracy, most feel it, most feel it to be acceptable. Um, Although recognized as a show, as re, although recognized as a wrong, sorry, I'm going to re-say this. Although recognized as a wrong, that does not stop many from pirating, as the general as ease of use and perceived harm as the ease of use and perceived harmlessness of pirate, pirating services makes it worthwhile. Um, so also, the dissatisfaction of the price of a product can increase piracy rates for a software. Also, furthermore, the quality of copy of a copy and a user's general computer knowledge uh, severely affect the uh, likelihood of piracy. The Consequences and Punishments of Piracy by Henry Richard. Piracy may seem like a minor crime, but it does have major punishments and consequences. Next slide, please. Repeat offenders are subjected to cr cr criminal prosecution Piracy can result in up to five years in prison, and you can get fined up to $250,000 for the harshest cases and $200 for the minor cases. People, have, people that have downloaded 1,000 plus files may be charged up to $250,000 in fines and up to five years in prison. Next slide. If you only use the, the pirated content for personal use and not resell the, the judge will most likely Disco offenders and misdemeanor. Not every state has the same punishments. In Massachusetts, people have downloaded 100 plus files can be charged up to $1,000, $100,000 and up to two years in prison. Next slide, please. One of the biggest online piracy groups called the Sparks Group, an organized crime group, were recently shut down in August, 20, in August 2020. They distributed the pirated work through servers operated by the or, by the organized crime group, also known as the Spark Group. Law enforcement from a total of 18 countries were involved in taking down the Sparks Group. Next slide. Punishments of piracy. George Verdi, a UK national, who's arrested in Cyprus, while Jonathan Correa was arrested in Kansas, where two other members of the group were also arrested. With another member, Umar uh, Hamad, who is on the run. George Bordy was also charged with wire fraud along with conspiracy to transport stolen property interstate, along with altogether a maximum of 25 years in prison, including the piracy charges. All three members have been charged with copyright infringement, copyright infringement conspiracy, which is a maximum jail time of five years. How to avoid piracy. Next slide, please. How to properly give credit. Always attribute from the original creator. Give the author of the work you are using or exampling your work off of credit. This isn't the only legal way to use content, but it can greatly benefit the creator. 
curate from a variety of sources to prevent any possibilities of piracy, take notes and information from a variety of third party sources and not just from one source. Always be mindful of image copyright before sharing in any image content, only use a portion of the image unless you have direct permission from the owner or creator of the image. Other sources of non-copyrighted images are a part of the Creative Commons and you don't need permission from the creator. Next slide, please. What steps can you take to avoid pirating content? Knowing your vulnerability. Piracy can range from buying and selling stolen content to just downloading a movie for cheap offline. To be safe, try your best to stay away from sites that may seem malicious or fall under the category of torrent. Next slide, please. What steps can you take to avoid pirating content? To avoid piracy, make sure to steer clear of web pages like these, mega.nz, THT crawlers, cs.rin.ru, and ROMs mania. These, uh, these sites are commonly known for ille the illegal distribution of content. Next slide, please. Uh, what steps can you take to avoid pirating content? Torrent. Torrent is a popular way to transfer files on more than one server to reduce bandwidth usage. However, torrenting is legal, but downloading unsanctioned copyright material is not, and that's a great portion of torrenting. For your safety, when visiting sites that are labeled as torrent, proceed with caution. Although some torrent sites can be legal, most are using content without the authorization of the creator. Works cited pages. Christian Mungi, my work cited. Nathan Askier, my work cited, page one. My second page of work cited. Henry Richard, my work cited. Lincoln Patterson, my work cited, page one. And my second page of work cited.